I am happy to show you how to join this Windows 8.1 professional machine to Windows Server 2012 R2 Essentials. And we're going to do it in a way where we don't have to join the domain. We can skip the domain join. And we can also skip our DNS from getting messed up. Um, we want this client, let's say if this is a laptop and it were to leave the house, you'd want the networking to stay the way it is. And that is the default Windows install, where if you look at the properties of TCPIP, you'll see it's all automatic. And we want to leave it that way. We don't want to hard code our DNS to have the uh, domain control or this R2 box we're going to back up to daily. Uh, we don't want that box to have to be on for this remote machine to um, surf the web, for instance. Okay, so let's just uh, focus um, not on so much on the old registry tweaks that did work for 2012 without the R2. Here's update rollout three. And it has some registry tweaks, but none of that works for R2 release. So on the client side, first step is to open up your browser, and if you Google your way to domain skip join, the very first article is the one you want. And there it is. Why? Because we need to put this in our clipboard. This will also be with my takeyourtry.com article. Okay, like it says, we hit Windows plus X to bring up command prompt as administrator. Say yes, right click, paste, enter. There, now we've done a tweak so we won't have an issue with this machine trying to join a domain. It'll stay in workgroup mode. All right. What's next? You'll see this is pretty simple, as long as we follow these directions like this, exactly. Type in the name of your server. So in my case, it's a somewhat goofy name. Um, it's really just me testing. Test company server, Tesco server, forward slash Connect. Notice I had to do HTTPS. You get the usual continue to this website warning. Download software for Windows. Accept. Click Next. You'll probably also notice this install goes pretty crazy fast. We are going to inject a step in the middle of the install, however, where we're going to tweak the registry Slightly. Why? Because R2, you'll see, will want to mess up our network stack. We want to prevent that from happening. So right now, it's just installing the connector and getting things ready. Okay, notice it found the connector itself. I didn't have to type anything. And now it's ready for me to, to do some stuff, like type username and password. Okay, here, we're going to go and do regedit. Root, and navigate our way to hkey local machine software, Microsoft. Networking, server discovery. Now, you'll see a new registry key just got added as part of this installer on the right. But the neat thing is the network, it hasn't messed it up yet. It hasn't touched it yet. There you go. Escape, 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 close. Why am I showing you that? Because we're going to change the skip. Auto DNS to server detection is false. That's the registry key that Microsoft injected into old versions of 2012 with their update rollup 3. On this product, R2, there is no update rollup, so all we do is change this to true. That's it. It's that simple. No need to reboot. We can close registry editor. We can go about with our install. Actually, we want an admin account. Okay, it's connected. It was ex incredibly fast, right? So I'll just point that out. Next thing I do for users, because they don't really need this thing auto-started, 
is turn it off. Um, just before I launch that launchpad, by the way, there's this file history restore thing that comes up. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of that. I have no need to use file history settings right now. Okay, in the launchpad, we can go to settings and say, I don't want it to auto start when Windows runs. And we can exit it. Next thing I also like to do is set up Launchpad. Backup launchpad.exe, it's called. They put it in a strange place on Windows, but let me show you. Okay, I'm getting a little lost here. Okay, so it lives in Windows System 32 Essentials, Backup Launchpad, and Executable. So we can right-click and pin it to our taskbar. Okay. You may also want to pin it to start, so that if the user hits the Windows key and brings this up, they now have an icon for easy backups. Let me explain. Why would you want that icon there? Well, we got rid of Launchpad. We don't, most end users don't need that or don't want warnings popping up or anything, but they could click this and very easily configure their laptop or desktop, or just see when their last backup was. Does that make sense? So what it'll show them is just a quick view of backup status, if there's any underway, or right now we have 11% through a backup, all right, so the first backup started automatically. And for that first backup, as with previous releases, you'll see the STPU is impacted a bit. Uh, this is a measly machine, actually, that I have this installed on. Okay, so it's cruising right along. The backup is going fast. Everything's good, we think, right? But let me prove it. So let's go into the network settings and make sure that my network settings did not get messed up. Ta-da, they didn't. There's no service, by the way. There was a LAN configuration service in previous versions where you could uh, keep that service from starting, and that would keep your network from getting messed up. But now it's a registry key, and I've tweaked that registry key, and I've intercepted it before it would have a chance to change all my network adapters if I had multiple. I only have one in this machine. So that's it. The backup's already done. Now we can issue a control delete, reboot this thing. I want to convince you that this system is fine even after a reboot. Its network is fine. Let me convince you by showing you the network settings. They're good. Escape, escape, escape. All right, and then how about Windows plus X system to convince you I'm not on a domain. I'm still in work group mode. We're good there too. So, The machine should be nice and calm now. Its performance is better and settled down. Um, okay, looks like it's going to ask us this every time. So we want to say don't restore to get rid of that NAG screen. Okay, how about this button comes up instantly and tells us when our last backup was done. And we could, as maybe a laptop user, this is kind of important, you might want to turn that off. If it's in a bedroom or something, maybe you don't want it to wake up every night and back itself up. But normally if the machine has AC power, you want to leave it on so it'll automatically wake itself up in the middle of the night, back itself up from any changes from the day before, and go back to sleep. Okay, that's a wrap. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and for visiting tinkertry.com.